Hello, everybody, and welcome to Music Industry Insights Worldwide. And today I have the amazing Mark Carey with us. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for inviting me along. Lovely to see you. Oh, thank you. It's an absolute pleasure. And thank you for your time today and coming on the show and sharing your experiences with us. Do you want to tell the audience a little bit about yourself, where you're from and what you do? Yeah, certainly. Yeah. So I'm... Uh, my name's Mark Carey. I'm based in East Kent uh, in the UK. Uh, I'm the CEO currently of Evolution Music. Uh, I'm also the acting CEO of Roulette uh, Records, which is a small independent record label. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, my background has always been around music, uh, but also lifelong environmentalist. So uh, I now get to combine the two passions between <laughs> music and environmentalism, which I can tell you about today. Yeah, sustainability is a massive part of the industry at the moment, and we're trying to evolve and make it more sustainable and eco-friendly. So I can't wait to hear more about some of the initiatives and the work that you're doing around that. So thank you. And how long have you actively been in the music and entertainment industry? Uh, well, giving away my age now, aren't I? So I started, <laughs> uh, I started in the mid-80s as a DJ. Right. Um, so back when I was, what, what, what would I have been then? Three years old. So. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was uh, in my in my mid mid to late teens. I started out as a DJ, uh, predominantly in the uh, in the UK hip hop and electro scene wow. uh, in London, and uh, and then went further afield, and then that evolved into the kind of rave scene as well. But as a lot of the DJs from that time will tell you, uh, we earn we earn plenty of money, but then we'd spend more money than we earned. <laughs> Right. So, <laughs> so we had to get a day job. Um, and uh, my day job took me into the world of uh, facilities management and the built environment. Fantastic. So it was an interesting juxtaposition. I've always been involved in music. I've always been a DJ. I've had radio shows. I've been involved in entertainment. Wow. And then I've always, up until about 10 years ago, had to have a day job as well. Right. OK, I get that. To supplement your income and make sure you can survive. Exactly, yeah. You have to <laughs> That's the music survive. industry. <laughs> Yeah, that's the music industry for you. And do you actually have a musical education or is it just something you, you've passionately done? Uh, I mean, musical education in the sense that I've always been around music. Yeah. But I'm not musically trained. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't trained into this into this uh, environment. Uh, I was fortunate my brother and sister about 10 years older than me and my sister originally worked in the music industry. Right. So from a very early age, I was exposed to a lot of music that maybe young people of uh, a similar age weren't. Yeah. So that definitely influenced. So that's an education of sorts. I would say so. Yeah. So that's that's really interesting. So you've had quite a few different roles in the industry as well. And do you still do them all now? Are they kind of all ingrained in you and you just kind of do them all? Yeah. I mean, fortunately now I'm able to do what I love. And and that that yeah. was a bit of a turning point. I mean, you can I mean um, the space I'm in at the moment is a studio and upstairs there's music stuff going on. So you can hear it going on in the background. So you <laughs> can't escape it even when we're doing an interview. Um, but yeah, so so basically yeah, it's always been my passion music. And, and yeah, about 10 years ago, I've been working in uh, in sustainability and environmentalism uh, in the in within local authorities, maybe local government work. And I just felt like I'd had enough of the greenwash. I feel I feel I can say that because I was involved. Yes. Um, and I felt like we weren't making the difference we should have been. So um, I just thought, I'm going to go back to what I love for a while. Yeah. And what I love is music. Good. So that's what I did. I came back. And now, as I say, we kind of combined the two. I've gone back to environmentalism, but in the music industry. So setting up a small independent radio station, an independent record label, yeah. Working with artists and helping to manage them and move them on. Uh, that was where where I came back in and I was excited about that. And I still am. Good. That's what I like to hear. So tell us more about your initiatives and some of the things you do around sustainability. Yeah, certainly. So um, as I say, I've always been Cameron Dom DJ. My radio show has been running for 20 years now. Congrats. Part of the, the fun thing about the radio show is we work with up and coming artists or established artists. Fantastic. So when we wanted to create the platform to support artists in the record label, yeah. we identified a very simple ethos, which we've been involved with through the permaculture uh, movement. Yeah. And that's Earth Care, People Care, Fair Shares. Okay. So we felt like we were able to do the equitable fair shares piece of the of that ethical uh, perspective and the people care. But yeah. we were really struggling with the earth care piece. Okay. So we set up a small project within our team uh, called the Earth Care Project yeah. to identify sustainable options that we believed were meaningful 
uh, and moved us in the right direction. Yeah. We struggled. Okay. We struggled. And so because of that, and because of our background in sustainability and, and R&D and innovation in the past, yes. we kind of took the approach, Buckminster Fuller approach, but if you can't find it, create it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where we started. And we realized that plastics are the big offender. Right, uh, yes. For us. Remember, yeah. this is for us, not for the industry at this time. Yeah, yeah. But, okay, well, this is a big offender for us. Physical media, CDs, jewel cases. Uh, obviously, touring and, and streaming were issues that we were concerned about as well. Yeah. But plastic was a big offender. Could we do something about the toxicity of the supply chain of plastics? Interesting. It turned out we could. Yeah. And so we investigated bioplastics and five years of R&D. Wow. And we created the world's first plant-based bioplastic final, well, L final. Final, bio vinyl LP. Fantastic. What a breakthrough that is. And that saves the environment. And it also means that, do they biodegrade as well then? Does that mean they're kind of safe for the environment and they kind of break down into the environment itself? Yeah, so, so what we wanted to do was identify something that was compostable. Yeah. As well, because re recycling is great and it's a step in the right direction. Yeah. But we wanted something that'd be compostable as well. So we were looking for something that end of life could be compostable, but was robust enough to withstand the same pressures of pressing traditional PVC. That's where the R and D bit came in, really, is because we needed to make sure, in order for this to be taken up by the industry, we needed to make sure that if you were going to a pressing plant, yeah. all they had to do was swap one compound for another. Right. And and that's what we were working on for so long. There's been some happy accidents along the way, which I'm happy to tell you a bit more about in terms of what we found out once we started pressing. Okay. But that, in essence, is where we are right now with the launch of our first plant-based uh, right. vinyl. And have you rolled that out to other people as well, or is it just something you've kept in-house for now? Yeah, so originally, as you quite rightly say, we, you know, we, we were looking for this for ourselves. Yeah. And a very good friend of ours, Rob Cass, who was at Abbey Road producer in-house for seven or eight years. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to send him the details uh, without telling him what we'd done. Okay. So I sent him this this record, and it was, in those early days, it looked like a splatter vinyl. If you know what I mean by <laughs> okay. That. Green and black and white. And, yeah. Uh, it played absolutely fine, but it was a little bit of surface noise. And the feedback from Rob was, well, you know, he's actually critiquing the content, funny enough, as a producer. Okay. Like, well, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a bit like New Wave of Classic Rock. It's a bit dated. And I was like, I don't know not worried about what you think of the music <laughs> what it sound like you know and he said yeah. well a bit of surface noise actually but you expect that with with splatters and you expect that a little bit with picture discs and kind of vinyl okay and that's when i said to him well if i told you there's no plastics in that and it's completely plant-based and it's biodegradable what would you think. say then yeah. and i think it's one of the first times i've ever heard him speechless <laughs> and he said look the industry would would want not only want this but they need this yeah so that's when you you know come back to your question that's when we realized oh it's not just us actually yeah and that's, that's when you know that's when the train started to run away from us because it just exploded with the interest. Right. well congratulations well done too sorry yeah yeah i think that's fantastic and also do you kind of look at cds and other kind of cassettes and things like that too or is it just focused on vinyl for now yeah, that's a very good question, actually, because we are fundamentally, we're now an Evolution Music, which is an offshoot of Roulette Records. Okay. Is fundamentally an R&D company. Right. Okay. And we realise that there's a need in the industry for a dedicated independent R&D yeah. uh, platform. And, and we're looking at everything. No, nothing's out of scope for us right now. An evolution it's kind of evolving all the time and it's keeping up with the times right and also just it's what other people want in the industry not just in the industry but audiences too right they want something that's eco-friendly that's sustainable and that they, they actually care about the environment and i think more and more people do care about the environment now so they're more aware of what they're buying and what they purchase yeah for sure and, and we've seen those consumer trends changing all the time and that, that the pressure interestingly is it's funny the the music industry often will steer itself towards the consumer needs yeah but it's not not very often steered by the artist but this this particular issue around climate crisis is being steered by artists as well i like artists, that. producers and yeah. consumers 
and you know we've got a very strong global indie music scene and wonderful organizations i must give a shout out to music declares emergency yes uh, you know there are great organizations doing incredible work djs for climate action yeah and we work with all of those organizations to you know to further the as you say the evolution of these products yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah that makes sense so what kind of challenges and barriers have you faced with doing that yeah it's been an interesting journey can imagine as yeah. a small independent business um dealing with the scope and scale of the opportunity yeah has been challenging yeah i can imagine had it been just our need then we could fulfill that and we could work with our own artists and we could that would be fine but as a small team seeing the global impact and you know the first project we we kind of proof of concept project we put into the marketplace um just to see what the interest would be like was yeah. was fire a connection with music declares emergency so yeah. lewis and Faye at, at mde yeah. had a stall at the independent record market up at the cold drop yes and they wanted to do a little uh, a tester run so we worked with ninja tunes and um secretly group oh fantastic we put out a little ep which had um i think we had on there porridge radio uh black country new road um angel olsen and bicep wow impressive and so there was only 20 of them pressed and yeah. they did it almost like a little raffle you know to raise some funds for mde and, yeah. and for an awareness yeah. yeah and and we did that and it was the interest was huge and off the back of that uh brian eno's team at earth percent spotted what we were doing and said look we'd want to do a project with you and so we we're very fortunate the first project that we really proof of concept we did with brian and his team uh shout out to kathy and becky uh joel and uh, adam the, they introduced us to Michael Stipe and um, BT Wolf. Right. And so they released uh, our first uh, Earth Percent, which was on like version two or three of our compound. Yeah. Uh, so still in R&D. Right. And then the world grabbed hold of it and it was everywhere. So right. that that's a challenge. It's a double-edged sword because it was yeah. wonderful. But then I think about 12 months ago, I realized it was more like a runaway train. Right. We couldn't cope. We didn't have the resources. Yeah, yeah. We didn't have the expertise. We were still in R and D. We didn't have the finances. Okay. And it was just running away from us. And every it was getting more and more traction. So bigger artists, bigger labels, you know, yeah. larger okay. orders potentially. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah, it, that that was a challenge. Okay. Uh, the other thing that's that's been a challenge, I think, for us is to to negotiate our way in the marketplace as an emerging independent business. Okay, I can imagine, yeah. So without, again, without, uh, I think when we arrived at making vinyl and started talking about what we were doing, yeah, the very next day almost, the competition, and I'm talking existing yes. large-scale competition, yeah. had a similar product in the market. Okay. I, w I won't. I would say the work that they're doing is in the right direction, but it's not what we do. So okay, right. I can explain that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that. And, and thinking about it on a worldwide scale, like, did you ever, in, 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 did you ever think it was going to be that? Did you ever think it's going to be this big? Did you just think it's going to be a little sample thing? You're going to trial it and maybe roll it out between your own artists, but then you realise like, all these people want it on board. Yeah, but that was that was a big shock. And and to coin my fellow director Adrian uh, Clark, he said we've got a tiger by the tail yes <laughs> it really felt like that you know yeah. we, have, we we've got interest from the west coast of america to the east coast of well done. australia yeah and well everywhere done. in between so yeah. it's uh even even a plant in iceland that's being built so we're going north as well now. so it's great it's really exciting and huge kudos to those people that supported us and followed us to date yes and, and interestingly we're sort of emerging again in 24 yeah, uh, now on version six of the compound. Wow, uh, we're very confident about moving that into the marketplace now, and and a lot of people I'm reconnecting with are saying, oh, "What happened? You know, last year we all there was loads going on for a couple of years, and then we didn't hear from you last year, and that's <laughs> because I put the brakes on that runaway train, right? And we focused. So I'm going to circle back to what I was saying about the challenges focused on protecting our intellectual property yeah, that's the legalities right. behind it the patents right. it was a year of getting that right to right. protect ourselves as a small indie going into a Not global it. market 
place. And that must come with a lot of cost as well, right? The legal side of it and all that other stuff. So yes. scary. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. And you're on compound six. So tell us a bit more about how that's evolved, the compounds and, and the sound and the looks. How has that evolved over time? Yeah, so so interestingly, uh, say so the original was a was a dry mix that we put together on site in the UK. Um, then we were able to identify the components of the compound that we needed and we could mix it elsewhere. So we worked with our supply chain partners to do that. Yeah. Um, sonically, it, uh, it, there's, no, there's no difference. As a carrier, if you were to play our version, of, in fact, some people say it's even better. If you were to play our version of, of Evo vinyl against traditional PVC vinyl, sonically, the sound is no different. Right. The difference was we've got this surface noise that appears oh, on there. Okay. And that's depending on who you speak to, you know, the audio files, that's a problem for. Yeah. A lot of people have said, well, it's not that bad. We know what it, we know what caused it. Uh, yeah. Basically, it's the organic fillers we use. Okay. So uh, what's great is if you're working with synthetic fillers, you can dictate the size of those molecules. Right. Interesting. You can say, I want those to be you know, five microns maximum. Okay. So because we work with Mother Nature, she doesn't work like that. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. She says, might be five microns, might be 10, might be 12, might be 30. Right. Right. And that's the, that was the difficulty in, without moving towards a more prescribed and synthetic route, because obviously we want to maintain the authenticity of the yeah. product. Cool. So it was finding the right organic materials that had the right microscopic um, characteristics yeah that would be relevant to reduce that surface noise and that's what we've been doing that's each iteration has been about the sound now what we're working on is and these are some of the things we found coincidentally our product dissipates static which is a, a massive bonus yeah we didn't realize it would do that but it does well, it... um it's about 50 percent quicker for its cycle time on the machines in the right and it uses approximately 30% less energy on Fantastic. the machine. Well done. It yeah, so yeah. We didn't know that. That was just a happy coincidence. Right. So yeah. we're, we're now working with the manufacturers, the pressing plants, to prove that fact. Yeah. More more runs. You know, there's still a bit of wastage. We've, we've working on recycling that wastage so we can regrind it and reuse it. We, we've identified that can be done as well, which yeah. is great. So that's what's been happening. And, and now we're work, working with academic partners and some organizations yeah. to look at the life cycle analysis of the whole product okay. to identify those gaps that we might have in this go-to-market version one Yeah, and say, okay, what can we do better in the future? So it's a, an ongoing process. And this might be a strange question, Mark, but is it cheaper to produce it that way or is it a little bit more expensive? So currently, it would be a more expensive compound. Okay. And, and that's big, just scales of economy. Okay. Uh, and the, and the, the scaling up of it will be quite quick. And did you find that affected the sales at all? Or were people quite happy to pay that extra cost to keep it environment? Yeah, I, think, I, I think people generally, you know, the artists and the smaller labels are happy to carry that cost because yeah. ultimately it gets passed on to the consumer anyway. Yeah, yeah. So it, at a consumer level, it's a bit like saying, okay, you can have, you can have um, uh, the latest album from Coldplay, and it's uh, it's just your normal vinyl, yeah, and it's going to cost you twenty pound, yeah. Or you can have this really cool splatter disc, and it's going to cost you twenty two quid. Okay. Or you can have a picture disc, and it's twenty five quid. Excellent. Or you can have this really cool Evo vinyl; it's going to cost you twenty one pound fifty. You know, it's that kind of thing. It's in the range of all the other options. Yeah, yeah. And can you so kind of personalize it? it as well? Can you personalize it to how you want it, or is there just set designs? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've we've now started working on colored versions as well. So right. we've got a full range of colored variants. That means that we can also start to play around. We can have fun with it now. We can start yeah. to play around, and see if that we get some splatter cool. effects and and stuff. So. Yeah, and and we've got a lot of our, a lot of interest about I think probably over six hundred inquiries that are sitting there waiting to come through the the process to get in the marketplace. So it's an exciting times. So I think for us the most important thing is that it's been five or six years of hard graft. Yeah, yeah. But I think I think this kind of gives hope a lot of artists, a lot of people that you know kind of wanting to make a difference. The the challenges of the 
not just the the uh, the current climate crisis, but the challenges we face every day in the world. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You, yeah. you all know that better than most, and so will some of your listeners. Yeah. It can seem a little bit hopeless. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But actually, if you start to focus on the things you need, you might find in addressing those challenges and finding those solutions is something up somebody else needs, and that's what we. have yes. Fantastic. Yeah, I like that. So what, where, what are your thoughts and feelings at the moment on where the music industry is in a, as a whole in sustainability at the moment? I think they're probably, I'd say the industry as a whole is behind where it should be. Yeah. However, there's a lot of action going on to move it back to an, e to, to an even kill. Yes. What, what we do need is, again, it comes back to consumer pressure and our artist pressure. Yeah. We need to see more of that. And, and, and also we need to have fun with this as well. You know, that's the other thing of having worked in academia and R&D for a number of years. Yeah. It's great, but you've also got to start to have fun with it. Yeah. So that's where creativity comes into it. Okay. So getting, it's, it's okay to go out into the marketplace and say, oh, the climate crisis, isn't it bad? And bonk everyone on the head with it. Yeah. Okay. We get that. Yeah. What can we do about it? What's the good news? What's the exciting stuff? How can exactly. we get together? Let's yeah. collaborate. Let's do great things. Let's make a noise about it. And that's what the I think the music industry in particular and the creative arts can do particularly well. Yes. Is to create that noise in a fun way without having to interrupt everybody's lives and just get them to think about things in a different way. Yeah, not dictate to people either, isn't it? It's more of a choice thing. And the more we educate people on these issues, the more aware they become. And then just those little small things, they'll start to change. You know what I mean? So I think it's a really good okay. thing. And do you get kind of support and funding for all the research and development that you've been doing? Or has that come all out of your own pocket? Yeah, I mean, part of it is what we call bootstrapping, where we've used our own funding. Um, yeah. Quite a substantial yeah. amount has come from friendly investment as well yeah uh, and we're just about to uh embark on a crowdfunding program as well to keep us in that independent space i think it's crowd so, yeah it's um it's very much about sort of friendly investment it's why it takes so long yeah uh, i can imagine you know, i say five years but of course we did have covid and lockdown during that period as well okay. and we've been you know we've had to pull the money together to do the tasks that's not yes Whereas the bigger organisations, if they want to do something, they just go, oh, there's the money, get on with it. We have to say, well, how do we find the money? Then do it, right? That's a different matter. Well, I'll leave a description with a link below. So every, and if anyone wants to donate, feel free to make a donation to that as well. Um, and kind of what would you like to improve in the next couple of years around sustainability and the things that you're doing? Yeah, I, th I think we need, well, two things, actually. Um, yeah. I think we need, we need to see more honesty. Yes. We, we keep, I'll come back to that point about greenwash. You know, we, we've had consecutive governments, we've had corporate sectors con continuing to say that they're, they're addressing these issues and they're not. Right. And that's fine. So let's just be honest, shall we? Yeah. We're in a predicament, there is a crisis. So let's stop bullshitting and let's get on with yeah. finding proper solutions. That's the, f that's the first thing. Yeah. The second yeah. thing is stop plowing money. And I'm talking like directly to government here. Yeah. Stop plowing money into greenwash scenarios that you know are never going to go anywhere and just line the pockets of your mates in the corporate sector and start filtering it down to the people that really need it, like the independent the creative arts arts movement or the creative R&D movement or the innovation movement. Make that a reality. Those are two things we need to see in the future. Let's be honest about where we are and let's fix it. And yeah. let's find some funding that can trickle down and actually get to the people that need it. And make a difference at the same time. 100%. Yeah. yeah. I love they that. It will make a difference, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think that's what we're all working towards in our own little base is changing the music industry for a more better, eco friendly, sustainable, inclusive place to be. And I think we're getting there. Small steps are being made. We might make steps in the right direction, but just not fast enough. I totally agree with you. Yeah. 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 And I think there's a, a, another good point as well is that often we do, we seem to deal with these issues in, in silos. Yes. And then, you know, I'd want, I, I think there needs to be more collaboration. Yeah. And, and sharing that information across. Yeah. I think so too. Cause I think that's what we're trying to do in the EDI sector is, you know, different cultures and different backgrounds have different challenges and also bringing research to the table. But if we're not sharing that research, 
then other people can't learn from it or they can't, do you know what I mean? Be empowered by it or find out more. So I think education is the key, but collaboration is also the key too. So I totally agree with that. And and I think, and then you start to share resources, as you say, you start to educate people in different ways and, and a united front across all areas of, you know, 21st century issues. We'll we'll call them 21st century issues. They've been around a while, but we'll call them that for now. You know, showing people coming together for a common cause yes is common sense yes so yeah that's collaboration exactly collaboration is key. good as well right mark it's all for yeah. good things too for sure. so, yeah. yeah and if you enjoy it too and you've got a smile on your face that makes it even better because i just love a good time and enjoying what i do so yeah i think you're amazing and this whole project sounds fantastic i can't Thank wait you. to see some of these finals i'll be looking out for them now mark yeah <laughs> For sure. Well, just uh, again, you can follow us on. Uh, we haven't got a huge following on on socials because we haven't really, you know, we, we haven't had much to tell necessarily. But uh, you can find Evolution Music if you Google Evolution Music. Uh, you'll find us on all of the social platforms. And Evolution Music dot co dot uk is the website for more info too. So, fantastic. Um, well, I'll leave yeah. that in the description as well. All the links Thank to find your work and your music and to donate. Do you also think that kind of age? Has a diff- has an impact on the people that are kind of open to this eco friendly and sustainable way, or do you think it's quite it's quite spread out? Really? Do you think everyone's quite accepting towards that? I think that's a good question. Um, I think I think generationally, yes, there is there is most. So the digital kind of digital um, generations, the millennials and yeah. the Gen Z, yeah. I think because they're used to sharing information and accessing information in a slightly different way. Yes. Probably are more aware or more concerned about these. Environment. Maybe. I mean, okay. my, that might be a sweeping assumption um, because obviously I work with people that I'm Gen X, you know, I work with some boomers that are still around that are obviously concerned about this. So yeah. I think it's a good question. If we were to do a, a straw poll, I think yeah. you're right. I think Gen Z will be the ones that come out on top that are most concerned and willing to take action. Yeah. And and you'd probably see a, a gradual, you know, downward spiral to to the boomers. And I get that because those are very, very different times. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. And you know, with this kind with these kind of initiatives, do you get a lot of pushback or do you find that most people are quite accepting and open for this in the industry itself? Yeah, I think there's if we can't come back to you to actually i've just thought of another barrier to the market so ironically one of the barriers to the market and this will answer your your question is that people kind of make an assumption about what a what being sustainable and environmentally friendly really is yes and so it's great that we have concerns around co2 levels for example yeah and it's and and greenhouse gases yeah but that is now the measure of sustainability right and so sometimes those are barriers we come up against and yeah that, and, and this is why i think a lot of innovation in r&d gets stuck in yeah. r&d in academia and never commercializes yeah. because they can't achieve the um they can't achieve the scales that right. are being put in front of them Right. And and I would refer to something like the built environment. So in yeah. the built environment, they created a code for sustainable homes, and then nobody could really adhere to it. None of the developers really did as much. You know, some did. Yeah. Uh, and then another government came in and scrapped it because it wasn't working. Right. Yeah. And it's it's like frustration. It, if you were being conspiratorial about it, yeah, you might say these things are put there just to put you off track and give you unachievable goals. Yes. So I think I think. To answer that question, you know, the pushback often ironically comes from those people that share our ethos in a kind of like, well, what's, you know, this is how you're measuring your sustainability. This is how I measure sustainability. And the two things aren't matching yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, then you need a broader understanding of what sustainability really means. I think that makes sense as well, because you can also, there's there's lots of different ways of measuring sustainability. And why is it always the CO2 factor of of it rather than okay we use glass we use plastics the electricity that we use there's lots of different things even the food that we eat like me right they all have an impact on the environment so i know when i was a part of the key change program 
all of the food was vegan. All of the food, whether whether we wanted it or not, it was all vegan. And that was to protect the environment, but also to keep down the, the carbon emissions because that has an impact on that, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah and I, so I think, you know, I'm not I'm not dismissing the fact that, that we need to measure in some way. I'm not, you know, absolutely, yeah. of course we do. Yeah. But it's in the same way that there are arguments around, well, if you were to measure the carbon footprint of a Tesla yeah. versus a Hummer, yeah. Well, yeah, Hummer yeah. wins. <laughs> yeah. But you and I know that Hummer's not more sustainable than a Tesla, right? Well, That's, uh, Oh, no, yeah. The Hummer's are massive. Like, they're like a big truck, aren't they? They're like a little army truck. Yeah, but because of the way they're, the materials are sourced, it's manufactured and shipped and typically to a specific reason, their carbon footprint is lower. So these are the kind of, now, you know, I'm kind of heading into the world of urban myths here, but I'm just using that to say, you know, in a facetious kind of way, mm. you know, one size does not fit all. Yeah. So we need other ways to measure meaningful, sustainable steps towards a collaborative yes. solution for this current crisis. Oh, that sounds good. So what kind of steps would you want to see if there were some? I think, I think, I think, do you know what things, in, interestingly, I mean, it's great that podcasts like this exist. Okay. So that's, that's one thing. It's talking about this, sharing, educating. Yeah. Uh, you know, talk, talking amongst people and trying to get people to understand things, but then simple steps that yeah. you can take. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, I, I wouldn't class myself as a vegetarian, but I don't eat a lot of meat. Right. You know, um, I start. I, yeah. I, I listen to my body, and as much as I can, I'm on a vegetarian diet. Yeah. But sometimes I think there's not something not quite right about me. I need to just eat something. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, so, so that's my pattern. That's what I decide to do. Right. I'm also kind of trying to move away to, from from dairy, for example. You know. So I'm doing the, these little things for myself. What I don't need to to do is to compare myself to the next person because we're all on different journeys that's true and i think that's the other thing that people forget to do yeah you know oh also i'm going to be a vegetarian now okay what so that means you're never going to have a bacon sandwich again in your life okay yeah. that's not true <laughs> you're going to sneak one in at some point uh, yeah. unless you're really vehement about so <laughs> and, and i'm being again i'm being kind of facetious but that's the point don't beat yourself up about it there's enough guilt trips in the world yeah yeah, yeah i totally agree Go down a path that you feel like you can make a difference for yeah. yourself that you're comfortable with. Yeah. And do you know what? Those things will snowball. And before long, you are doing the things you want and you are inspiring people to do things around you as well. So that would be the thing. You know, if someone's listening to us today, chatting and thinking, I want to know a little bit more about environmentalism or what's this about plastic being so toxic? Because we always talk about plastic as end of life. Yeah. Check out the supply chain. Okay. Oh, we'll be doing the supply well. chain of PVC. Yeah. And in particular, the the a gentleman by the name of Kyle Devine, who's a professor at Oslo University, wrote a brilliant book called Decomposed. Yeah. Which really illustrates the sort of underbelly wow. of these toxic supply chains that are in the music industry right. and what they do to you. That's you know, and that's that's the sort of thing. If someone's listening today, have a read of that book. You know educate yourself a bit on some of the a different perspective a different viewpoint i love that and we've, we're running out of time we've got five minutes left mark so is there any wins or major successes that you would like to share with the listeners and anywhere that they can find you i will leave all of that in the description below but i know we've mentioned some of them already sure yeah i mean i mean in terms of wins i just i, I sort of pinch myself every day because the people i work with you know some of my creative heroes yes i get to meet and work with oh lovely and I just, I sort of pinch myself every day because they are, I mean, Brian Eno is, is one. I mean, I, I wouldn't, I don't work with him directly, but, you know, I was at an event um, just recently and uh, I hadn't had a chance to sort of thank him for actually one-to-one. -one. And I saw that he was, he was on his own at this event. I, I went over and I said, Brian, I just want to say, you know, thank obviously you. we've done two or three projects with you. Yeah. But thank you, mate. Thank you so much for what you do. So those are those are the big wins for me. You're kind of like, wow, I get to work with incredible people that are actually making a difference. I get to meet wonderful people like yourself, right? Every uh, it's incredible. Likewise. likewise. So we those, those are the big wins. And then and then there is a little bit of me that when we achieve something in terms of innovation, 
yeah. that maybe people said you wouldn't be able to. Right. There's a, li- there's a little bit of me. There's a little bit of that ego left behind that goes, <laughs> how'd you do it? <laughs> I did it. And well done and congratulations for that because some people would be put off and they would say, oh, I just I just can't do it. But you persevered, you stuck, stuck to your guns and you have made a massive difference. So well done you. And, and I've just you. been totally inspired by what you've shared with us today. And I just hope more people think about what we've discussed and make those positive steps to change and help the environment as well. Yeah, for sure. And I must just say, obviously, um, I- I'm here representing Evolution Music today, but it's really a whole team. Yes. You know, everybody in this business has worked hard. Steve Charter, Adrian Clark, myself. We've now got Kevin DeCosta in there as well, Amy Brooks. The team are incredible. They've worked, you know, ridiculous hours put so much effort and time into it our own resources uh, and our own finances as well so that's a there there's evidence again that collaboration works yeah, kudos to all of you and well done keep up the amazing work and what a fabulous team you are yeah thank you so much and thank you for sharing your story with us today really appreciate your time and we'll speak again soon it's been a pleasure absolutely lovely to see you. thanks a lot bye saskia thank you